In this video, we'll discuss how to build an AP Web Cloud or AP Web Hybrid Endpoint for the Mac operating system. I'll use El Capitan in this example. I'm also going to use a AP Web Cloud account to, uh, to show this, uh, but it works with hybrid as well. I'll provide the download link for the uh, AP Web Cloud Mac uh, or AP Web Hybrid Mac uh, agent. But if you're logged into your uh, portal, the first thing to do is, is, is download the endpoint. And that can be done by clicking on Web and going to Endpoint. It's worth here setting a anti-tamper password. This is the password that will be required to uh, uninstall it um, so that users can't just you know, uninstall it all, all they want. Uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is download the endpoint. Uh, we're going to use the proxy, connect endpoint, and then select Mac, and then click this link here to download it. Um, I will copy and paste this link uh, into the video so you can um, go ahead and, uh, and download it directly. Uh, once the download here, 3.7 megs is complete, uh, what we'll go ahead and do is uh, find that on our desktop. And uh, I will I actually already have a folder open, so I'll open up another one here. And uh, inside of this, there's two files, hwsconfig.xml and websense uh, endpoint.pkg. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and extract those to a network share that's accessible on the Mac. Uh, but before I do that, just because it's easier for me to edit it here in a, a PC uh, with copy and paste because I'm already logged in over here. Uh, one thing that you'll want to do is, is update this hwsconfig.xml just so we know which policy and, and pack to put in. Um, when you edit it, um, it'll download, apologize about that, it'll download and it may put your context uh, in here. Uh, automatically, but since uh, if you came from the link without the portal, this context may be wrong. So we want to verify in a couple places uh, the context as well as the default pack file. So th these same uh, elements are available from the on-premise hybrid uh, portal as well, and they're, they're kind of named the same thing. WS context is the init context, and then the pack file is the pack file. But first, if we go to web endpoint, we can see the context here. Since I downloaded this natively, it'll have my context in there, uh, so you want to make sure that these match. Uh, then I want to update the pack from this default pack uh, and explicitly define the pack that I want to use for this endpoint. So I'm going to go to Web, Policies, click on the policy I want to use for this endpoint, and copy and paste the default pack address or the alternate pack address, depending on which one you want to use, uh, and update what's in the quotes here. Um, I've got an extra line break in there, and I'm going to go ahead and press save to that. Now I'm going to swing over here to my Mac, and uh, just to prove that we're not filtering anything, I've got Chrome open here. I'm going to go to ESPN.com, which is a site that I think under normal circumstance would have a quota if we were filtering, but uh, obviously it's uh, allowing me to go straight through uh, to the, the sports website. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and connect to the network share I put that on. And I put it in a uh, Mac web endpoint here. Now, it's important that you install this locally uh, and not install it right off the network share because uh, then it won't be able to reference the uh, XML file. So I'm just going to copy it to my desktop here real quick. I'm going to go in. I'm going to verify that this XML file um, oops, uh, looks like it's you know edited. And we've got what appears to be all of my information in there, so everything's good. And then I'm just going to install the package uh, by double clicking on it. I agree, continue, continue, agree again, continue, you know, you get the drill. Now, once it's installed, it starts working uh, immediately. So, a couple things I'll show you uh, real quick is first, for removing it or seeing and verifying that it's installed, you can go to your system preferences real quick. You'll notice at the bottom, uh, you'll have the Forcepoint um, client there. You can click on it. You can actually see the, the pack file uh, that it's loaded right. You know, if I uninstall it, it's going to ask me for that anti-tamper password. If I you know, type don't know it, it's just not going to allow me to uninstall it. So you'll need both the system password as well as that anti-tamper password. If you change the anti-tamper password on the endpoint tab, uh, the next time this endpoint checks in for an update, it will sync the new anti-tamper password. Um, 
So that's uh, been configured. Another thing we can look at is the network tab. We can see the actual enforcement in play now by going to advanced uh, proxies. And you can see it's basically inserted the pack file here. If I disable that and I go back, you'll see that it's automatically re-enabled. It simply just can't be if I just totally butcher this to like that. Press apply, I go back you can see that it just won't let me change it or disable it. So full pack enforcement's in play. I'll open up Chrome um, and I will go to ESPN.com and you can see now I get a quota time message. So I'm definitely being filtered against the service. So that's how you go ahead and install uh, the Mac uh, web endpoint. Again, this is El Capitan uh, and I hope this video was helpful.